King's Daughters Medical Center and Brookhaven Urology are pleased to announce the addition of Dr. Joel Duff to their medical staff. Dr. Duff specializes in general urology, kidney stones, men's and women's urological health, and diagnosing and treating urologic cancers. Don't let these health issues restrict your lifestyle and keep you from enjoying life with your family and friends. Dr. Duff and the staff at Brookhaven Urology are here to serve your needs. To make your appointment, call 601-833-5713 today. How's it going? Raise your hands for Coach Martin. We'll get going. Mitch? Gonzo, you know, I think it's now, you all are now 11 and one over the past two years when Javon scores more than 10 points, I guess, what, what kind of a spark did he bring today? And, and can you put your finger on why he's, uh, you know, such an important piece for this team? He's muted. Can you hear me? Well, in most, most cases, uh, when it's a physical brand, uh, that's up Javon's alley, you know, and we need him to be that type of guy. That, and he's also one of the guys that can go small as in the four position. I thought Kobe played an extraordinary game on both sides of the ball, but Javon just, just a tough, hard nosed guy. And that, that's his brand of game. It was a physical one. It was one of those ones you start out with boxing gloves on eventually you get to playing some ball, but it was uh, fun to be a part of, but, but that's his style of game though. Dave Matter. Conzo, what'd you think of, uh, Jeremiah today, just really efficient on, on the offensive end and got three blocks too. He hasn't really blocked a lot of shots for you this year. How level, he, it was no question that you had a lot of talented guys on that floor, but high, no question the best player on the floor, uh, high level. And I'm so happy for him uh, in his last three games. I mean, I, and I, th I thought he's played well all season long, but just happy the way he's playing, the pace, the poise, the maturity, the, the things that he says in huddles and all that just, you know, makes you feel proud as a coach because he's made progress every year and he, he started to, see his hard work pay off. Um, so man, I mean, just, I mean, that. but if he's that guy, man, it's, there's not many in America as better, you know, might be some just as good, but high level play on both sides of the ball and, and then doing it efficiently without fouling. And he's not a guy that doesn't complain if he doesn't get the ball, he just get it off the glass, make the next play. Just uh, really impressive, really impressive. Aaron Lyon. Coach, we heard what you had to say after the Mississippi State second half. What do you have to say about this second half today? Oh, impressive. Uh, you know, that's who we are, man. We, we're a team that shares the ball. We play together. Uh, doesn't, doesn't matter who, who leads us in scoring. Uh, uh, they really enjoy playing with each other, being around each other. Uh, Exton had one of his better games, but he was the best cheerleader on the sideline. It just, I mean, they, they, they bought the right things, man. They, they, they value the right things. And all they want to do is win basketball games, be together, have some fun, get on a plane, flight home. And I just, Mississippi State, man, it's just, I mean, and, and credit to Mississippi State, I'm saying Tennessee, both teams beat us. Tennessee both halves and Mississippi State in that second half. And it just, it's one of those things you just kind of sweep it under the rug, keep moving, because it's hard to explain what happened. You try your best to forget it, but you gotta, you gotta learn from it and keep plugging. Sweetie. I was on another Tillman question for you. He, he, he kind of played through some double teams. He, he scored off a couple, I want to say, and he passed out of some. Just, is that what you want to see from him when teams do double him and, and kind of focus your attention on him? Yeah, I mean, just like he's really embraced the double. Now now he's getting to the middle of the floor in the double. Normally when teams double him in the past, and he spent a lot of time, and that's the good thing about, you know, having a week off and even before that, but he spent a lot of time just really seeing when he's being doubled. Embracing the double, and we spent a, we spent a lot of time on doubling from the baseline, the middle, somebody running over the ball. A lot. So he sees a lot of different things, and that takes a lot of time to adjust. You don't see many professional players seeing doubles all the time like that. But just the pace in which he's playing, he's finding an open guy, uh, and just his composure, man. Because you don't realize it, I mean, well, you realize it, but unless you're going against, he's 260 pounds, and just and, and he's done a great job with his body. He hitting you, and constantly hitting you. Some will give eventually. Mike Hey, Coach, as well as Jeremiah is playing, is there another level? Does he have more inning? Oh, no question. I, I think so. I, I think if, if I was a bed man and I'm not a gambler, I'd, I'd say 75% right now as well as he's playing. And just just, just, just the other pieces. And I, I won't give, give you all that because that's that's between Jeremiah and I that we talk about. But I, I think there's a little bit more. I, I would say 80%. Yes. Tyler? 
Coach, you talked uh, earlier this week about how you know what you're getting when you play Texas a and That's a really physical game. Uh, but yet you guys, for the most part, were able to stay out of foul trouble. Um, so what is kind of the key to, to guarding without fouling in a game as physical as this one? Well, the thing that we always say, defend without fouling, that's easier said, said and done. The way the game's uh, not, not necessarily officiated, but with the hand checking, you can touch a guy that's a foul. Uh, so, so, and then when you have guys like them that, you know, Miller, who's a driver, Save your own flag, a guy that can get you up and down. Uh, Jackson, guys that can drive the ball. Gordon, they can drive the ball, make plays. They put pressure on your defense. So you have to be sound. You might have to give up some pull-ups. I mean, you told me the SEC is a high level of basketball, so everybody can play. You have to defend them without fouling, but, but more than that, when the shot goes up, you have to block out. You have to put bodies on those guys because they crash the guys, even their guards, and, and they're physical when they crash. If you can look at their bodies, they've done a phenomenal job in the weight room. So it's not just when the shot goes up, you got to, you got to, block out and you got to get the ball. And I thought this was, in my opinion, Kobe's best game since he's been in that Mizzou uniform, in my opinion, that physical brand and going toe to toe. And I thought he did a great job. Eric. Conzo, uh, Drew had had foul trouble the past couple of games you guys have played. And I think he had 15, six assists, six rebounds and four steals today. Just what about that? The break led to have this, him having that production today. More than anything, just rest. I mean, Drew's a good basketball player, played 37 minutes. He's, he's a good player. And he's good on both ends of the floor. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily say he's Pons, but he's probably the next guy in, in our conference as far as, as a defense. He doesn't block him like Pons, but he gets steals and do other things. He shut down, you know, perimeter guys. So again, his game is on both sides of the ball. So it's not necessarily you look at it and say he only took eight shots. He got this and that. What did he do on the defense side of the ball? Was he in foul trouble? Because again, if he's in foul trouble, we're a different team. When he's on the floor, then you see the results because now he's on both sides of the ball. And I, and I thought what he did do tonight, and I know Coach Cohen been on him a lot. He has to be an aggressive score. He has to look to score. And that's what he did tonight. He's like, man, you, you're too good of a player not to not to look to score the ball. And we need that. Travis. Jack. Council, you guys turned the ball over uh, 10 times in the first half, only four times in the second half, I think. Was that an, an adjustment in your part or just executing better? I think executing better. It's not anything. It's not nothing I hadn't said in the last three years. I mean, you you can just push plug, record, and you already know what I'm about to say. Whatever when it comes to turnovers, but man, just take care of the basketball, man. I mean, that's that's it. I mean, it's nothing nothing special. Settle down, take care of the ball, be strong with the ball. Because you know, what they do is as good as any team I've seen in America. Is when you're driving the ball, they do a great job of taking charges. They get they get in position quickly, and if you don't make the path, you don't jump stop. You'll get a charge, and, and I think that had a lot to do with some of our turnovers. Then the other part is not to make any excuses for our guys. They do such a great job of taking charge. You get in that lane, sometimes you might have a layup. Now you're not shooting it like you need to shoot it because you think somebody getting up on you about to take a charge. So, uh, but no, you know, 14 turnovers too many, and uh, we made the adjustments in the second half. You know. Hey, Conzo, uh, Mark Smith hasn't particularly shot the ball too well through these last number of games. Uh, do you think there's a difference? Do you see the, a difference in his team when he's not shooting the ball well as opposed to, you know, that hot start he had in the beginning of the year? Well, we need Mark to shoot the ball. Um, he shot one for seven for three. If he, if he opened from three every time, we need that ball to go up. I mean, because he can make shots. We need, we, need, we need the ball to go in for Mark because he's a guy that works extremely hard. He works on his game. And he, and he puts you know pressure on himself if his shots didn't fall in because he spent so much time working on his game. So you want to see the shots fall for him. And he's a different player when the shots fall because he's defending at a different level. He's rebounding. He's doing all those things. So, man, we, we like to see that ball go in for Mark because he put so much time into it. And he's such a great guy. Dave, you have another one? Yeah. Conzo, there was a point where I think a &M cut it to 10. They had like an 8-0 run there. Kind of the same point of the game when Mississippi State made their run. You went inside twice to Kobe, or Kobe went inside twice. Just that that stretch there where you stayed aggressive. Just how important was that to finishing this out? Well, very like I said, one of our, our stress, you know, getting to the paint, dribble, whether it's via pass or dribbling the ball. Even Drew Smith, get to the paint, put pressure on the defense, man, because we we show them on film how teams defend Jeremiah. Jeremiah might not get the ball, but there's two guys hovering around him, so you got lanes to drive the ball, drive the ball, settle down, see it. But oftentimes, with, especially with a team like Mississippi, I mean, excuse me. Sorry. Texas a and them, because they're physical, hands on, active, and all that, and they're ready to take charge. You, you pass it to drive the ball. Not that you fit somebody blocking your shot, but you don't want the charge. But it's like, guys, turn the corner, make a play, because they got two guys hovering around Jeremiah. Get to the rim, and you'll get great opportunities. I thought Drew Smith 
and, uh, and Kobe did a great job in the second half. Even Javon getting to the lane. Got time for two more, Mason. Hey, Coach. So when the team is struggling to make uh, make shots from a certain area of the floor, do you guide the players towards a different shot selection, or do you let the players sort it out on their own? Man, you know, the thing about it, for the most part, guys take shots that they practice. I mean, it's, it's basketball. I mean, I, I don't have a mic in their ear, and they're not robots. It's basketball. You got to play the game. You spend too much time working on your craft. Play the way you play. And, and, and I've never been a guy, man, just say, okay, stop shooting the ball in a game, because now that becomes a focus. I might say, guys, we need to drive the ball a little bit more, but I don't necessarily say a guy's name, you know, and it might be, I might nudge an assistant coach to go to a hey, look, look at shot fake, look and drive, that sort of thing. But I don't necessarily say to a guy, uh, like Mark, one for seven, man, keep shooting the ball. They, if their shots, she practice good shots, keep letting them fly. They'll, they'll eventually fall. And, and that, because his teammates expect that from him. Uh, Mitch? Gonzo, Texas A&M started off shooting the ball pretty well, but then had a stretch where I think they missed like 13 or 14 in a row, missed seven threes in a row. Did you make any kind of defensive adjustment or did you feel like guys were settling in after the-, uh, the Settle down. Settle, settle down and play basketball. Um, don't don't allow your offense to dictate how you defend. Like that first three, I think Gordon hit, it was breakdown defensive by Drew. I think Drew Smith gave up 10 points early on his breakdown. So it wasn't necessarily anything that they did, his breakdown. Uh, Again, man, it's, it's, what, what do you call it? Time, I said time out of two minutes in the game and on stuff that we've gone over several times. I mean, just that's maturity and understand that that can't happen. There are other things that will take place. They might run a play that we hadn't seen before. Okay, let's make an adjustment. But stuff that we know is coming, you have to be prepared for it. Last one, Travis. Yeah, Coach, uh, just with the break that you had uh, in, in play, how do you feel like your players responded coming back? And uh, do you think there was any any bit of a slow start and in getting back into things in the second half? I mean, if anything, I mean, you got you have to give credit to Texas and them because, that, like I said, that, that pressing, they getting back and they running at you, taking charge in the lane, all that, and they were active and aggressive. And I think the other part that kind of maybe and the players didn't say this, but maybe startle some guys with their lineups. It was a unique lineup, a lineup we hadn't seen starting the game. Uh, it's almost as if we go into a game and Jeremiah, Jeremiah, Tim, and Drew Smith aren't starting. You're looking like, well, what's going on? And you don't want your guard, guys let their guards down. But nobody said that. Um, but just settle in and play basketball. Maybe some of the residue after the uh, Texas, I mean, Mississippi State game. Who, who knows? Uh, but I, I don't spend a lot of time hopping on, you know, past games outside of some specific. We got to keep moving. Thanks, Coach. Thank you, guys. Thank you all. Javon, coach said that, you know, when games kind of get, get physical like this, it's uh, it, it's up your alley, I guess. Did you have a sense coming in that, you know, the team might need a little more scoring from you or was that just uh, kind of opportunities that presented themselves? Uh, it was just uh, opportunities. Um, they told us all week that this is going to be a physical game. So we all just wanted to go out there and just play. Um, we knew it was going to be gritty. That's what we called in the locker room, uh, gritty. Um, just going out there, being focused and uh, just trying to get the win. Sweetie. Hey, Javon, just, I guess, what was different today compared to Mississippi State? Texas and that went on that 8-0 run to kind of cut it to 10, and, and it seemed kind of like Mississippi State, I know it was a little different, but what was just different for you guys just to, you know, keep them at an arm's length? Uh, you know, we've seen that happen once, so making sure that we just stay locked in, um, bring steady having that energy. Don't, this game, we tried to make sure we didn't get too high, didn't get too low, just stay there. And um, just steady go out there and compete. Um, we know basketball is a game of runs. So we just went out there and competed. And um, we came out with the victory. Colin? Yeah, Javon, last few minutes of the first first half and then first couple of minutes of the second half, you guys went on that big run to put it away. Just what what was clicking for you guys in those in those minutes there? Uh, you know, getting out, um, transition. I feel like we got like open baskets or um, getting steals on defense, getting stops. Uh, you know, Jeremiah was tremendous. Um, you know, he he was clogging the paint uh, on the defensive end, being able to get rebounds on the offensive end, finishing, just doing everything. So that opened up the floor a lot more for us um, than us just cutting, um, trying to get to the basket fast. Like I said, fast break opportunities that helped us out a lot. Eric? John, I know you'd rather be playing instead of taking time off, but do you think that the week off might have helped this team in some of a way just to rest everything that was going on? rest uh, or, or whatever you would define it as whatever you did, whatever you did during the week off okay. we um it would it helped us out you know just 
staying focused. You know, we we were watching film on our own and stuff, just making sure that we were locked in still. Um, that helped us out we in our group chats, making sure that we um, that we were going into this next game, being focused on making sure that we keyed in on defense, taking open shots, um, making sure that we had the right energy. Uh, you know, it could have it taking that week off. It could have been bad, but for us, um, I feel like we uh, we did a good job with it and making sure that we were prepared. Mason. Hey, Javon. So there, there were a lot of tough shots made close to the hoop today. What does the team focus on in practice to make sure that everyone is, you know, game ready to make those shots through contact? Uh, you know, during practice, uh, we um, use these like hands that go straight up, like something that the coaches have and um, just making sure we finish in through contact. Uh, coach has been talking about Steph Curry, um, like, focus and stuff like that, making sure that we've been focused. So just making sure we putting the ball at the right spot on the backboard so it can go in, just making sure we've been focused um, and making sure we're going up strong. Mike? Is, is there a difference that can you feel a difference in a game when like this one where you contribute offensively, some games it's not quite the same. Is that a feel or is it just an opponent, the way the game's played? How does that play out for you? Um, you know, just, Kind of just a, I don't, I really don't know. Just trying to go out there. I try to go out there and play like that every game, but you know, some games it don't happen like that. So, just making sure that I'm staying ready. Uh, everybody been telling me just to be confident in myself. Um, shoot the ball when I'm open. Um, keep driving it and just going out there and playing on both ends. And so I feel like I did that today, and that just opened up on the offense end. Last question for Javon Sweetie. Hey Javon, Conzo mentioned this just now. Just when when Telly's on the floor, Conzo kind of said that. There are two defenders kind of hovering around him, you know, opening up lanes for you guys. How, how do you kind of take advantage of that? How do you kind of see that? You know, when two people go on Tilly, he's a great passer. Um, he could pass the ball out of the double team. So that allows us to either cut, um, get up our line a little bit for an open three. And so he just do a great job of finding us. And, uh, you know, we just got to keep moving and help him out so he don't get in trouble. And he's doing a great job of passing the ball up. Thanks, John. Hey, Jeremiah. So today's game was the fewest points that you guys have allowed all season. Was that a testament to the amount of time that you had to prepare for this game? No, I didn't even realize we did that, honestly. We were just um, trying to make sure we just kept punching back. Um, normally, when we played, it'd be like, you know what I'm saying, going back and forth. We just wanted to make sure we just kept the lead and just keep building off of it. Mitch. Jeremiah, obviously, you know, last time out uh, had a big lead dwindle away in the second half. I guess, you know, was that on your all's mind today when, uh, you know, when they started to kind of make that that late push and, and what was different today? Yeah, uh, Coach Martin been emphasizing uh, somebody to to make sure when we get sidetracked it and we, when we already up and then they start coming back, somebody, you know what I'm saying, make it be known that, we not playing as hard as we normally play. So <clears throat> we all just was just making sure we were just saying like, keep playing because they kind of catch it back up and we going down, let's, let's keep going up, stuff like that. Dave. Jeremiah, you had three blocks today and they all, they all seem like big moments. You haven't had a lot this year when, you, when you're not getting fouls. Can you be more aggressive on the defensive end like that? Uh, yes. Um, yeah, I had, I think two or one of them. And yeah, I did. I didn't even. I don't even know how to answer that. It was just, I just seen the opportunity, so I just wanted to go get it. Sweet Jay. Hey Tilly, have you ever had a stretch like this in, in your career or life where you, things are just kind of clicking for you and you're, you're playing this well and just mentally kind of it, se it seems like you got clear and everything? No, not I haven't honestly, but. I mean, I've just been trying my best to stay consistent and stay at home and just doing the same things I normally do and not getting too ahead of myself. Come. Yeah, this was kind of going to go off that until you told us earlier this week you, you wanted to pick up where you left off and you didn't want the pause to be an excuse for you. Just how much have you have you seen growth in yourself, both in that, but in, in also, you know, the passing that you've shown out of the doubles on the block and things like that? I mean, when we had practice, we work on that all the time. Like, it's like not stressful, but it's just something that Coach Martin makes sure we got to do. And 
he just making sure he wear you down and try to W. you. So when the game comes, it's just like second nature. Eric? Jeremiah, is it a credit to you feel the game maybe slowing down around you with your more calm or are you just more confident right now than ever? Or what, what do you attribute just to whatever the success you're having right now is to? When I'm getting the ball, I'm just making sure I'm not just bouncing it and just moving crazy. Cause like, like y'all said earlier, if the double team come in, I'm making sure I'm looking for that pass out and which way they coming from to try to hurry up and go get a basket, stuff like that. So, I mean, yeah, I'm just being calm. I'm not trying to force anything at all. Dave? Drew Smith looked more like himself today. Just, just how big was his game and what he was able to do all around for you guys? He was leading us. He was playing the defense that he normally play. I know his wrist messed up, but he was, he was doing – he was leading the team, making big shots. Send down on defense. All right. Thank you, guys. Thanks.